And uh, really, really glad to be here today to talk about this topic of, about stocker cattle. How many of you in here are stocker cattle producers? How many of you got stockers? Okay, how many have cow cattle? Okay, about half and half. How many have both? Okay, more and more of those all the time. So, uh, good. So, so what I'm going to talk about specifically, a lot of it will be related directly to stocker cattle, but we'll have some other other stuff that will go on through there, and there'll be some maybe some thinking about replacement peppers and some of the other topics that you might be interested in. But I'm going to basically talk to you about a lot of work that we've been uh, doing down there in North Carolina for about 25 years or so since I've been uh, on the faculty, and we've learned an awful lot about how to best manage nutrition programs for stock of cattle. And of course, those of you that, that are in that business know that, that it changes constantly. It's, 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 it's a matter of you're doing a good job of buying feeds, making smart purchasing and, and risk management from that standpoint, uh, and, and there's a whole lot to it, so we're, we'll get right into it. Now, times have really changed, and, and uh, when I first started, and for probably 15 years, we, we talked about cost of gain, uh, you know, being about, about 50 cents or so in the feedlot, maybe up and down a little bit from that. Uh, that's kind of what we could, we could capture as the value of our gain. Uh, but then, but about, I guess about six or seven years ago, things just completely changed. We all know that, that uh, when feedlot gains went up above a dollar and even higher than that, then uh, we started to see situations where we could get paid for those gains uh, uh, on, on our stock of cattle. So there's a lot more, a lot more opportunity for margin in this, but the sort of run up in feed prices uh, uh, further challenged us to even make that thing work. So uh, nevertheless, today we need to be looking at, 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 at a uh, you know, cost of gain uh, somewhere around or a, a, a cost of gain of about in the 65 to 85 cents per pound range on these stock of cattle. We can do that. We can we can turn some pretty good margins on the cattle and, and uh, we, because we do get some benefits from packaging cattle that uh, are sold a lot of times, one or two at a time, and then uh, into these uh, tractor trailer loads. So a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities there to add value to these cattle, and uh, and lots of people willing to pay more cattle that have been been straightened out and, and, and do, do a good job. John, can you turn the volume down on that just a little bit? It's just getting a little bit of feedback here. So if we think about stocker programs. Uh, we have a wide variety of systems, and so it's very it's, it's hard to generalize and just talk about stocker cattle because uh, we have lots of different systems. Uh, obviously, the, uh, when I first came to work, one of the most popular ones, or what we saw most of our, our, our work with, with stockers down in, in uh, Southern Virginia and North Carolina were summer grazing systems, and basically calves turned up on the mountain, and, and uh, as, the, as the fences rotted down, and and things got a little bit risky with these cattle. We could see a little bit less of that. Also, we had lots of people that decided they wanted to come from Florida and build big houses on our ridge tops, and uh, they didn't necessarily want cattle uh, up there roaming around their, their area. So we've seen a lot of that decline. Uh, we also have uh, quite a few programs uh, down in the, in the coastal plain region that is based on warm season grasses and Bermuda grass, especially in, in conjunction with some of the uh, some of the animal production systems that we have down in, in, in those areas. So uh, a variety of those. Then uh, we also have some winter grazing and interest in those kinds of systems. Again, down east with the crop lands and uh, cover crops and that sort of thing, cattle do quite well in those systems. And then uh, in this area and in the area I'm from, you know, stock pot fescue, having that winter forage out there, so calves can graze it, and, and then oftentimes we'll keep those calves on that in the winter and then follow. Uh, into a grazing system the following summer and, uh, and do quite well with those. Now, the one that has the most growth and the most interest in, in our area and most of the larger stocker operations I work with have gone to a, uh, a basically a byproduct based feeding system where cattle are carried most of their feed. They, they are oftentimes are out on pasture uh, with or without hay, depending on how much grass is out there. But the design really is to carry most of the feed to the cattle. And, uh, and have them distributed out there on the land where they're not going to have a, a, a big problem with waste management and have to have a, a waste management plan and those sorts of things. So lots of those kinds of systems have sprung up, and, uh, and that's where most of our interest in and, uh, and, and interest in this nutrition topic has been. 